Hello everybody, welcome to a new video of James Speed Shop. Today we're going to discuss what I'm going to do with my S124 5 liter V8 turbo. This is an M113 engine, so if you're new to the channel, have a look on my website, jamespeedshop.com is over here, or on my YouTube channel in the right corner, if you use my logo, you can click on it and see all the other updates about this project. So, for the people who didn't watch before, I've been on the dyno, that's uh, two videos back, I've been on the dyno, got good results, up to 4000 RPMs, made 389 uh, horsepower at 4080 RPMs, and 680 Newton meters at 2700 something RPMs. So in the line, uh, this is correct for this engine, because it's still ramping up. So I suspect if I didn't have any issues after 4100 RPMs that I still have uh, over 430, 440 horsepower at 7.7 bar at 95 octane fuel. So this is pretty low octane fuel, so it performed pretty good. So in the line uh, I made about 120 to 140 horsepower more than an original 5 liter engine at uh, 4000 RPMs. So it's still correct to say what this engine made. So my suspect, I suspect that it had fell flow. That's one of the issues I think I had. Fell float due to high back pressure. Uh, I think that's the main issue because everything was pretty good. So uh, in the last video before this one, I showed you the cam timing of this engine that is pretty weird in between the different two cams with this SAS system. So if you've seen an engine with these Solenoids on here, you most see them on the V12, they are standard on the s -Gas w W220, you have this as an option. So, what I'm going to do is change the camshafts and the springs, for sure. But, before I went on the dyno, I already was busy with some different uh, cams, but different cylinder heads. So, sometimes you should be a little bit lucky, and I was this time, to find these m 13 k cylinder heads. So these are from an SL55 AMG, according to the part numbers. So uh, the miles that they have done, I don't know. I suspect it's pretty low, or they did very good oil changes. Because the this is not cleaned, this is how it came out of the engine. So it looks all pretty good, all the lobes are looking pretty good. There's no damage on it, it all looks good. So you can see also double spring, this is what you want, uh, what I need for sure. So this is originally M113K, you find these springs in every uh, compressor engine, also in the SLR, it's the same. Um, so they have a an, an bottom plate, two springs, and a top plate, and uh, yeah, this is how they all came. So, um, I, have a f I, I can make a video about it because I tested these springs to see the difference between OOM uh, springs and these ones. So, this is a fell from a uh, 430 engine. It's, it's completely the same, so this is an exhaust fell from the m 13 k this is from uh, the 430 engine. So these are the, the springs that I are in all the M112, M113 engines, except the compressor versions. So it's just a single spring, you have just this retainer, this is all the same, but this is then different. So this is from the compressor engine. So, um, so here in Europe these um, M113K uh, engine parts are not that common, you don't see them a lot. Uh, these cars you always, in the past, like maybe five, six, seven years ago, you see them more on the streets, not still pretty rare. Nowadays, in the region I live, you never see them. So they are just, yeah, very rare. Um, so to have these parts is pretty, yeah, pretty good for me on this moment. I think this is the best heads and cams and uh, valves you can have. Uh, that you also can buy from Mercedes. You got could buy from Mercedes. I think these these springs you cannot buy anymore from Mercedes. So that's yeah. If you break something, then you have to go in the aftermarket uh, section, of course. So camshafts pretty good. I think M113K these M113K is rev to 6,400 RPM standard. I think also that's then where I'm going to be with my rev limiter. 
So I will be up, uh, I think I would go to maximum 5,600, 5,700 on stock uh, cylinder heads, 5 liter cylinder heads. Uh, so I can now rev a little bit more, so I have a little bit more room. So um, what I'm also going to do is uh, upgrading the turbo. So this is a uh, Pulsar uh, 7170G. So that's like a, a copy of a Garriott G40-1150. So um, what I want to mention is that this is maybe not needed, but for the upgrades I'm going to do, I thought it was needed because I want to have more than uh, five, 600 horsepower. I want to have to get more out of it and don't want to get running out of turbo. And what I, the conclusion that I have with this engine is because of the big exhaust valve, one exhaust valve and the spring pressure that you cannot run a very high uh, back pressure with these engines. I think also when you run the small turbo with double springs you will hit uh, a point that you have too much back pressure because my back pressure was already 1.7 bar uh, with a boost pressure of 0.7 bar. So it's almost two times, over two times the, the turbo pressure, the boost pressure on the intake side. So, um, what I want to mention is what I also could do is with my system, just run <coughs> the cams and the springs, and then I think my setup would be good enough to hit 500 horsepower to the wheels. I think that would be possible also on normal fuel. But, uh, because I have these heads, and I thought they were the same, I think a lot of people think these cylinder head castings are the same as a 5 liter or 4.4, 4.3. That's not true, because I measured, the first thing that I measured is the exhaust port. This exhaust port diameter is 39 millimeters. On the stock port is 36 millimeters on a 5 liter. So these exhaust ports are uh, 3 millimeters bigger than the uh, 5 liter pause on a compressor engine. So you can easily flow more air to the exhaust. Uh, intake I didn't measure yet, but I, I think I'm going to check if there is more difference in these cylinder head casts. And so there is really a benefit using these cylinder heads. A more, more flow is always better, of course, or easier flow. So um, the thing that I decided is to, do, to redo the complete exhaust system. Um, it's still it's a lot of work of course but um, and I want to show the difference what I did is so this is the flanges that I'm now using so this is 36 millimeters this is 39 this is the uh, this is one of the type of bands I'm using so this is 37 millimeters inner and this is much bigger this is 42 so this is what I'm going to use on here so it's much bigger so I can flow um, yeah I think it's the best way to do because I don't want to have any restrictions anymore in the exhaust system because I want to flow more than that 5-600 horsepower and I want to have the room to do it. So this turbo um, on like this turbo is capacity is made for 2 to 7 liters I think and this is they rated it 2 to uh, 4.5 liters so my engine is 5 liters so it's on a it's, it's, I'm already over what they say it could do. But what I want to mention is, if you want to run just a normal petrol, my system would be pretty, pretty good because you have very high uh, torque levels, low in the RPMs. So if you want to have uh, just run a normal petrol, I think with the original compression, the setup would be pretty good. But you should change the fell springs because with a small turbo you will hit now, yeah, I think it's it's well flowed. It's, I, and, and I think it's also the cams that I'm using is not pretty good. So the system that I have on this engine uh, will be for sale. So if somebody is interested in my manifolds and my turbo setup and want to run just regular petrol and uh, not more than let's say uh, 0 0.8 bar of boost, I run 0 0.7 you can contact me if you're interested in uh, in this set. I think it works pretty good. I can sell it with the turbo if you want to, but you have to change the two double springs, otherwise you get the same as I have. But I already ran 680 Newton meters with a very flat torque curve, so I think it, it uh, with the horsepower level, I think it would be capable of uh, 430 to 450 horsepower on normal fuel. 
if you change the valve springs and not use these SAS cylinder heads, cylinder out shell tune or cylinder shut off system. So um, what also needs to be done of course, I need to change the head so the complete engine needs to come out again. So, but I'm already done it like uh, 10 times, so that's not really a problem. So the car is all checked in a load reader and it's running, so it's, it's a lot of work of course, it's a lot of work, but I want to do it uh, the correct way. So this turbo is also much bigger. So the turbo was normally located here, uh, so it needs, I wanted to have it more in the front. So I have an alternator down there. On the original position, but then a little bit higher because normally there is uh, it's it's locked in here on this bolt. So the plan is I have to have to look into it. If I want to have perfect uh, four into one exhaust manifolds, what I'm I'm trying to do to do four in one uh, exhaust manifolds, not exact the same runner length. I think that's not really needed. But I'm going up in size and I'm going then from the uh, 48 millimeter outside to a 60 millimeter outside per side and then to one 3 inch intake in the exhaust housing of the turbo because it's a 3 inch intake. I think the best is to run the alternator on the other side then I can run here a better downpipe. So this is, will be shorter so the turbo will go more into the front so I have more room here. So this turbo is 71 millimeters. I think this is 62. So it's much bigger, it still runs a 4 inch intake, this is also a 4 inch intake. The exhaust wheel on this, I'm not, don't know it out of my head, this is 70 millimeters. This is a 2.5 inch intake into the exhaust housing and a 3 inch out. This is a 3 inch in and a 3.5 inch out. So I'm going to run, going to a 4 inch downpipe and then underneath to the, to the car to the rear muffler, that is still 3 inch. But I'm going to run it with the bypass valve, so I have then two 3-inch outlets. That's how you, you could say it. So, um, yeah, that's the whole plan. So, this exhaust housing is 106 and it flows about 25% more than the exhaust housing of the GTX 3582R. So I have more room, so I should have less back pressure. Um, the GTX uh, 3582R is, I think, rated to 700, 750 horsepower. The other turbo is rated at 1150. That's per very positive. But there are people running with a slightly smaller engine, like a three liter, three and a half liter. They're running over a thousand horsepower on these turbos. So that's not the goal that I'm going to. Uh, I'm, I'm having. I still have the goal of around 750, around that number. That's what I want to, to make and of course my spool up time will be a little bit longer and not So the, the GTX 3582R was 2700 full boost 0.7 bars I think if you raise the boost press it, it can still come up on full boost under 3000 RPM So I think the other turbo will need a little bit more like maybe 3500 RPM full boost But I can run also uh, more RPM range, so I can run up to 6400 RPM, so I will just, the range will be a little bit higher, but also the heads will flow much better from the m 13 k because the, the overlap of, the valve overlap and the opening times are much better than on the original cams that I have, all on 5 liter stock cams. So, um, yeah, that's the plan that I have. So I think, uh, to be straight, uh, I think I could leave my exhaust system like it is and with this turbo and just running uh, originally 5 liter cams for example and double valve springs I think I would hit my goal on normal petrol from around 450 horsepower I think that's, that's easily possible and then you have a lot of torque in this engine and you can still run it up to 5000 5, RPMs but yeah I came uh, yeah, with a little bit of luck found these cylinder heads and I think if I want to do it correctly I should enlarge my exhaust system also before the turbo and also after the turbo because maybe 3 inches is a little bit small so uh, yeah that's my opinion on this point so if you're interested in this turbo system contact me and we will see what we can do so it's fully isolated with the uh, HJS uh, 
ceramic uh, uh, how you say that ceramic wall and stainless steel uh, uh, wall around the uh, around the exhaust up till the downpipe. So I also have the downpipe with it. So uh, if you're interested, in, just let me know. Um, yeah. We will see. So, so if you got any questions on, on what I'm doing, so this turbo is also a little bit bigger, so a little bit more weight, so I have to make some brackets. So it will take me some time, but get the car up and running when I, can, when I have everything installed. I think it's not that much work. I need to be a little bit remapping on the on the, the fuel map, I think, or on the VE map. So I have a little bit more. Uh, I think it will easily uh, it will flow more air. Easy, so I think it needs to be a little bit get a little bit more fuel in to get it in the right uh, AFR range, and then we will see. So, yeah, I'm going to clean this head. So I will take all the valves out, all the springs out, and then clean everything. So it will not be that much work that I did with the other heads, but I'm still going to get all the uh, hydraulic elements out of it because I never had had this uh, had hurt this head running. So I'm going to dismantle everything. Clean everything just like I did on the last uh, uh, cylinder head, and uh, yeah, they are just very clean. But I want to be sure, so I have them open right now. I'm just going to do it. So uh, yeah, will be very interesting the next few videos, I think, and uh, hope to hear your opinion about what I'm going to do. So this is it for now. If you've got any questions or suggestions about my upgrades, uh, let me know. Uh, also have a look on my website jamespizza.com, the link is over here. And see you for the next one. Bye bye.